Hey, it's Friday. Uh, let's see if we can finish um, the rest of lesson four. Lesson four is super long though, so we might not actually finish the whole thing in this video because I don't want to go much longer than 20 minutes. But even if we don't, you should kind of get the idea of it well enough to be able to attempt the problem set that I've put up as a Google form today. I remember the last thing that we were talking about um, yesterday was how anytime you have one of these questions where you're increasing something or decreasing something by a certain percent, you've got two ways of thinking about it. You, For example, if you're taking 10% off a bill, you could think of it as, oh, I'm paying 10% less, so let me figure out what 10% of the price is and subtract that off. Or you could think of it as, oh, since I'm paying 10% less, that means I'm actually just going to pay 90% of the original price, so let me just figure out what 90% of the original price would be. And even though there was a little bit of weird rounding stuff, they both ways came out to the same answer. So um, we can always do things those, either of those two ways. So let's look at question up here, example two. It says, Ken said that he is going to reduce the number of calories that he eats during the day. Um, Ken's trainer asked him to start off small and reduce the number of calories by no more than 7%. All right, let me keep track of that. No more than 7%. Ken estimated and consumed 2,200 calories per day instead of his normal 2,500 calories per day. Um, did Ken reduce his calorie intake by no more than 7%? Okay, so we're going to figure out how much of a percent decrease he did to his calorie intake and then figure out like whether that was more or less than 7%. And so we have basically two ways we could do this question. Method one would be um, find the difference between the original and new amounts. Then find that difference as a percent of the original. The second way would be to just find um, find the new amount as maybe I should I should almost be using instead of find here I should maybe write represent eh, whatever new amount as a percent of the original And then the second step you always have to do when you do this other way is adjust, um, how can I write this? Adjust answer to only represent increase or decrease. Okay, so let's try doing this question both ways. So the first way would be to find the difference between the original and the new. Well, his original calories was the 2,500, and his new calorie intake was 2,200. So the difference between that is 2,500 minus 2,200 equals 300. And now we want to know, okay, well, if his original was 2,500, let's find the difference, which is 300, as a percent of 2,500. So this is like... A part of that 2500 that he like stopped eating so we're gonna do part divided by original which would be 300 divided by 2500 and so this is gonna be I don't know I'm thinking about how many times does 3 go into 25 approximately an 8 8 times so this is about an eighth 
I'm looking for an answer about 12%, maybe, something like that. Uh, 300 divided by 2,500. Hey, I called it. I honestly did not know that was going to be the answer, too. So it came out to 0 0.12, which, you know, we moved the decimal over two spots to convert to a percent. So that is 12%. All right, so that means uh, he de oops, decreased his calorie intake by 12%, which is definitely more than the 7% that his uh, trainer told him not to go over. So he, he reduced his calorie intake by too much. All right, so let's do that same question using the other way though. It says find the new amount as a percent of the original. So in this one, we're just gonna do new divided by original. And in this case, the new amount is the 2200 that he started eating. And the original was the 2500 that he used to eat. And so when you do 2200 divided by 2500, you get 0.88, or in other words, 88%. 0.88, which equals 88%. Well, if what he's eating now is only 88% of what he used to eat, then we could find how much of a decrease that was, right? I mean, he used to eat 100% of his 2,500 calories, and now he only eats 88% of that. So the difference there is 12%. Same answer we got over here, just a different way to do it. All right, let's move on. It says, uh, Skylar is answering the following math problem. So we have a math problem about someone doing a math problem. How lame is that? Okay. The value of an investment decreased by 10%. So this is like kind of what's going on with the stock market right now. The stock, a stock value or some other investment goes down by 10%. You lose some money. It's not fun. Uh, the original amount of the investment was $75. What is the current value of the investment? Okay. Um, we could just answer that, but I think it wants us to do something different. Let's see what it says here. Skylar said 10% of $75 is $7.50. She's correct about that. And since the investment decreased by that amount, you have to subtract 750 from 75 to arrive at the final answer of 6750. That is correct. I'm gonna give her a little check mark by there and I'm gonna put it in black because she essentially just did strategy one right there. She found the difference and then found, found that as a percent. Um, that's great. Okay, create one algebraic equation that can be used to arrive at the final answer of 6750. Solve the equation to prove it results in an answer of 6750. Well, I think what they're trying to get us to do here is, is to see that she essentially used strategy one, and let's see if we can write an algebraic equation that essentially uses strategy two. So if you have an investment that decreased by 10%, you could figure out what 10% of it is and subtract that off. Or you could say, if I lost 10%, then I still have 90%. And so let's use the other strategy where we're just saying, hey, let's look at what's left over. Like what percent do we have after the change? And the way we could do this is say, okay, well, 90% of $75. Oops, I messed up. I just wrote 90. I want 90% which is here, 90%. I moved the decimal over two spots. That's equal to 0.9 or 0.90. So I better put a decimal here. So 90% of 75 is gonna equal X. Like that's just the unknown number that we don't, well, we do know because we know what the answer is, but that's the value of the investment after it decreases. And so this better come out to $67.50. I think we're pretty confident that it will, but let's do it anyways. 0.9 times 75 
equals 67.5, but I'm going to put that extra zero on the end because it's money, so we always have two decimal points. So 67.50 equals x. Okay, so just another way to get the answer. Um, let's keep it moving. It says, Schuyler wanted to show the proportional relationship between dollar value of the original investment X and its value after a 10% decrease Y. He creates the, the table of values shown. Okay, so... Does it model the relationship? Explain, then provide a correct equation for the relationship Schuyler wants to model. Hmm. Well, remember about proportional relationships. I'm, I'm looking at this question for the first time myself in a while, and I'm trying to remember whether or not this, this does what the question wants it to. I mean, my first question is, is this a proportional relationship? Remember, a proportional relationship means that you can always take x, multiply it by some number that we call k, and get y. And as long as you can do that for every single one, every single pair of values, then you've got a proportional relationship. Well, we know that, let's do the easy one. 10 is 1 tenth of 100, and 1 tenth is a decimal is 0.1. So 100 times 0.1 equals 10. And so in order for this to be a proportional relationship, um, you would have to be able to multiply the x value by 0.1 in every single pair times 0.1 and get the y value. 75 times 0.1 equals 7.5. 200 times 0.1 equals 20. 300 times 0.1 equals 30. And 400 times 0.1 equals 40. So this is indeed a proportional relationship. You know what I should have done? I should have done it the way we used to do it. Remember we used to do this? We draw this extra column over here. We call it the y divided by x column, and then we would do that for each one. And if we did that, we would have got 0.1 for each one of these. So that's another way we could have figured that out. Okay, but does this, even though this table's proportional, does it actually do what Schuyler wants, him, wants it to do? It says that x is supposed to represent the original investment, which it does, like seven, you could have a $75 investment, or you could have a $100 investment, you could have a $200 investment. But then Y is supposed to be its value after a 10% decrease. And I don't think these Y values do that. These Y values represent how much you would lose if you lost 10%, right? If you lose 10%, then you lose $7.50 $7 out of 75, or you lose $10 out of 100. But that doesn't show the value after a 10% decrease, right? This should be the 67.50 that we got at the other, um, when we answered the question on the other page. This one, if you start with $100 and you lose 10%, you should have 90. So this table's like kind of right, but it doesn't do exactly what Skylar wants. And so um, if Skylar wants the Y value to always be what's left after you lose 10%, then really he should be multiplying each value by 90%, not 10%, right? If this K was 0.9 instead of 0.1, and you were doing 75 times 0.9, 100 times 0.9, then you'd have all the correct values over here. And so we're gonna write the equation that they want, and remember proportional relationships are always written as equations Y equals KX, and you just figure out what your K should be and you put it there. And I'm saying the k should be 0.9 for 90%. And so I think the equation they want is y equals 0.9x. All right, um, how about this? You do as much as you can of um, this whole example three, part A, B, and C. Like pause the video and see if you can do those three parts. I'll put them all on the screen in case you're not following along on the ebook or whatever. So there's part A, B, and C is over here. Pause the video, spend, you know, however many couple minutes you got you need to try to figure that part out without my help, and then check your answer against me. So you're pausing. All 
All right, so hopefully you're coming back from a pause. And it says, Justin has eight badges uh, as of the last report. He wants two more badges so that he will have a total of 10 badges. So if Justin completes the additional two badges, what will be the percent increase in his badges? So we could say, well, from eight to 10, that's an increase of two badges, right? So that means that two out of his original eight, right? This is the, the part that he's increasing by, and this is his original. Well, that equals, well, two over eight, that's the same as one over four, and that equals 25%. So um, that's, another, that's one you should just have memorized by now, one fourth equals 25%. This is one way to get this answer. Another way you could have done it is just done the new amount, which is 10, divided by the original amount, which is eight. And when you do 10 divided by eight, well, you could um, reduce that to the fraction 5 fourths, which is one and one fourth. Well, that equals 1.25, right? Which is 125%. But then you have to take away that 100% because we don't want to know about the whole, all 10, which is 125% of eight. We just want to know like what's over 100%, like how much is he increasing by? And so we, so we adjust our answer to be 25%. Two different ways you could do that question. Okay, so part B says, express the 10 badges as a percent of the eight badges. Oh, well, I already did that right here. I expressed the 10 as a percent of the eight by doing 10 divided by eight, which got me 125%. Okay, and so C. Does 100% plus your answer in part A equal your answer in part B, why or why not? So hopefully you, you get the idea that this question is trying to get you to compare the two methods that we've been using to solve these questions. If you used this method to solve the question originally, then they want you to look at trying to do it this way, but noticing that your answer comes out 100% too big, and that if you want to get the same answer, you got to subtract that 100%. So that's essentially what that whole thing was about there. All right, um, let's do this one last question, and then there's still a little bit more in lesson four. Like I said, it's super long, but uh, maybe we can finish that up in the next video or something. All right, so... The population of cats in a rural neighborhood has declined in the past year by roughly 30%. And we'll just go exactly 30%. We're not going to worry about the word, the word roughly. Residents hypothesize, that means that they think or they guess, that this is due to wild coyotes preying on the cats. Wow, that's pretty dark. Okay. Um, why did they even put that in the question? The current cat population in the neighborhood is estimated to be 12. Approximately how many cats were there originally? Okay, so this one's pretty tricky. So, um, the cat population declined, I'll just draw a down arrow, by 30%. This means the current population is 70% of the original, right? If you lose 30% of something, that means you have 70% left over. And so this 12 represents 70% of what there used to be. So you could write this, we haven't done any of these questions in this way, so let's try it this way. So the question essentially is 12 is 70% of what number? That's the route that I think I'm gonna to take to answer this question, but I wanna address one issue that a student might have. I hope that you didn't go, oh, Okay, so if it went down by 30%, then let me just at, find out what 30% of 12 is and 
add that back to 12, right? Like, oh, I'll just, I'll figure out what 30% is and I'll add it back up because that will get me to what I used to have. That method doesn't work. And the reason for that is, is the 30% decrease is 30% of whatever the original number used to be, which I think is going to come out to like 15 or 16, something like that. The 30% doesn't come from the 12. The 30% is the number you have left over after the decrease. And if you try to increase back with that 30%, your 30% will be too small. So uh, it'll be easier for me to show you what I'm talking about after I get the actual answer. So let's finish the question. It says 12 is 70% of what number? Well, 12, and then where it says is, I say equals. 70% is 0.7 and then of what number? So times x. And then I divide both sides by 0.7 to get x by itself, and I get x equals whatever 12 divided by 0.7 is, which should be bigger than 12. It's gonna be 17.1428, blah, blah, blah. You can't have 0.14 of a cat or whatever, so let's just say, let's just round it to 17. Now, if the original was 17 and the new was 12 and it goes down 30%, that 30% has to come from the 17. So 30% of 17 is approximately 5. But if you try to work backwards the other way and take 30% of 12 and add it to get back up to 17, it won't work. Because what's 30% of 12? Like 3? I don't know. 12 times 0.3 equals 3.6. This, When you add 3.6 to 12, you don't get back all the way up to 17. So, so you can't work backwards in that way. You have to you know, use some other methodology that's going to actually get you all the way back to that original number. You can't use a percent of an original number when you don't know the original number. All right, that's it.